I love the books of Eric Ennion. A few words from his book on Cambridgeshire literally tempted me onto the road to explore the countryside. He wrote, A lonely road from Covington, based for much of its length on the ancient ridgeway, running between the valleys of the Till, the upper waters of the Kim, and the Molesworth Brook, carries you uphill and down over Mickle Hill and Crow's Nest Hill to Keyston. I joined my planned route on the B645, formerly the Kim Bolton Turnpike, which connected Higham Ferrers with Great Storton, later becoming part of the A45, which ran all the way from the Midlands to Felixstowe. The first pause in my motorcycling cycling itinerary was at the Three Shire Stone, enabling me to cover three counties in one hit. There's a good parking space in front of this impressive water tower, which is, by the look of it, I guess, from sometime in the 1930s. This is the historic stone that marks the exact point at which the three counties of Cambridgeshire or Huntingdonshire as it would have been when the stone was erected, Northamptonshire and Bedfordshire meet. That raises the question, when was it erected? My search through old maps gave me the earliest reference I have yet found. This is on John Carey's 1787 map of Bedfordshire where the Three Shires Stone is labelled at the exact spot that it comes from today, near this village of Covington. To get to Ennian's Lonely Road, I first had to ride to the village of Covington, where I chose to seek out the medieval church. Following the winding, narrow lanes of the village, I sought out the church entrance, which turned out to be a very low key affair. No grand lich gate here. No obvious place to park. So I left my motorbike where I could, in front of a row of terraced cottages. Pushing open the little kissing gate, the full extent of the church and an ancient yew tree opened immediately to view. The nave is the oldest surviving part of the church, dating back in parts to the early 1100s, not long after the conquest. The tower is 14th century the quaint tiling on the top of the tower is there because the 1870s Society for the Protection of Ancient Buildings stipulated that repairs should be obvious and not intended to mimic the original. The tiled roofing on the chancel certainly doesn't mimic the original. It might even be a 20th century job and it looks ruthlessly utilitarian and out of keeping with the rest of the church. Inside, the font looks ancient and must be contemporary with the nave and with the north door next to it. You can see the north door in the top right corner. The ironwork in that north door dates from the early 1100s too and has one of the earliest examples of what's called split curl ironwork door hinging in the country. What a wonderful detail, hinges hammered out on a local blacksmith's forge nearly a thousand years old and still working. In folklore the north door was considered to be the devil's door. Like many, this one has pagan symbols the 12th century tympanum, or lintel, is carved with a wingless griffin 
and a lion facing each other at the top. Right, back to the bike and to seek out Enion's lonely road from Covington to Keystone. What were those words again? A lonely road from Covington, based for much of its length on the ancient ridgeway, running between the valleys of the Till, that's the upper waters of the Kim, and the Molesworth Brook, carries you uphill and down over Mickle Hill and Crow's Nest Hill to Keystone. These hills are on the rising ground which is the highest in Huntingdonshire, being at over the dizzy height of 260 feet above sea level. These highest hills are the lowest in any county. We'll still count Huntingdonshire as a county for our purposes. This means Huntingdonshire has both the lowest lowest point of any county as well as the lowest highest work that one out, even if I can't say it properly. This is Mickle Hill that I'm approaching. There's a cutting over the top, which is very prominent on the Ordnance Survey map, which appears to be man-made rather than a hollowway, worn down over time. I suspect it was done to reduce the gradient for farm wagons. You can see the cutting banks either side of the lane as we cross the brow of the hill. Down again. Next is Crow's Nest Hill, which can be seen there on the horizon. What a joy to be out motorcycling on this lane. Not a car, cyclist or pedestrian to be seen. And if it was lonely in Ennian's day, he published his book in 1951, well, it's not changed much since then. Trees in the distance mark the brow of Crow's, Crow's Nest Hill. Here we are at last. Over the brow of the hill. And now for the gentle descent down that lonely road to Keystone. Ennian wrote that Keystone's cottagers range around two sides of a letter A. Its church set in the middle of the crossbar is curiously large for such a little village. It tells a tale of many centuries, an epitome of village history. And there's the church of which Ennian spoke with its grand spire poking through the trees ahead. I had to pull in and take a look. A grand lich gate this time. The massive spired tower is 14th century. The nave and the chancel, mainly 13th century.
the glorious east window speaks of the wealth of the benefactors, possibly commemorated below the window itself. Here's a curiosity with a human touch. A priest's mass dial, crude sundial, scratched on a stone. A stick was inserted in the hole to throw the shadow and it told the parishioners the times of the mass. The village must have been considerably larger and more populous than it is today to have needed such an ample church. Then, when the wool of their downs was a lively trade, they added a south porch and a pair of transepts and, towards the close of the 15th century, were ready to heighten their nave by adding, adding a clerestory. The church stands unperturbed by other changes of fortune, but the manor is no more than a grassy mound. Its moat, a line of almost level ditches. Back to the bike. Let's press on through the village. North, out of the village, is a road called Toll Bar Lane, for good reason, as I was to discover. This lane, long established as the B663, runs up to the junction with the old Market Harbour to Brampton Turnpike, which later became the A604. Now declassified. An interloper has come between these old roads, namely the A14, connecting the Midlands with Felixstowe, in effect doing the job of the old A45 on which I started this video. Riding along Tolbar Lane, I knew from the map that I would have to cross the A14 at a very awkward staggered crossroads. Now's my chance. The other lane to cross. And here we go. Resuming the ride along the last few hundred yards of Tolbar Lane. I myself was staggered to see at the junction with the old turnpike as fine an example of a 19th century Tolbar cottage uh, uh, as I have seen. No wonder they named the lane from Keystone to here after it. There's the bay window where the toll gate keeper looked out for potential toll gate fees. I couldn't help but take a ride along this section of the old turnpike, which was bypassed by the dual carriageway in the 1990s. My reward was a couple of sightings of milestones from the turnpike era. to Huntingdon, 11 miles, to Thrapston, 6 miles. And a mile further on, perhaps not surprisingly, to Huntingdon, 
10 miles, to Thrapston, 7 miles. Old roads, old maps, history, motorcycling, what could be better? Well, perhaps little, except the sun that shone down on my return ride back over Crow's Nest Hill, along Ennion's still lonely road to Covington.